Welcome to Episode Zero of Polymancer Studios' new podcast. Our new podcast is called DiceCast. DiceCast is a trademark of Polymancer Studios Incorporated. Episode Zero, we discuss starting a new campaign. science fiction game, that could be a horror game. It really depends what genre you want to do it in and essentially what kind of stories that you want to tell with your campaign. Now, the other thing you also want to consider is what types of plots or meta plots you will have in your game. Now just for anybody who doesn't know, when we say meta plot, we mean an, an overarching plot or a theme that ties the various adventures and plots together, right? Yeah. And I guess some people sort of view plots and meta plots in the uh, same vein. But what you might want to do, and sometimes game masters uh, will use this technique, is to figure out what types of stories you want to tell and what types of NPCs or characters you'll need for your campaign and sort of devise your basic campaign outline ahead of time before you even start talking to your players to know what kind of game you are going to be running and knowing what kind of plots that will be involved in each session is kind of important especially how you will tie each of these sessions together. The important thing is for the concept to be clear in your head when you're thinking about it and this is where it's a good idea to write things down. If you can summarize what the game is about and what you want to happen with it in three sentences or less, then you're on the right track because it means that the concept is clear to you. It doesn't mean that it has to be simplistic. It just means that the concept has to be so clear and so easy for you to understand that you can explain it in a short space. Yes, because one of the things you'll have to do is talk to your players and tell them and answer the question, well, what is this game about anyway? And if you tell them, well, it's a game where you are space explorers, a part of a large federation, and exploring brave new world, well, that says something. If you say, well, you know, it's kind of like this, it's like a futuristic setting, and you're kind of like a ship, and I think there's like a war. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then, of course, people will go, okay, well... They're going to fall asleep. Yeah, so if they fall asleep before you even start your game, maybe you should go back to the drawing board. The other thing to consider is how you're going to tie your game sessions together. Some people sort of run a game, and it's essentially a campaign that's just one large game that just never ends. And other people sort of cleverly craft a storyline and a story arc that would basically have all the characters involved with. It really depends on what your style of GMing, I guess. It's important to consider what brings the player characters together. Is there a reason for them to keep coming back adventure after adventure? I mean, if it's episodic, like some classic TV shows are, you can do that if each episode is unique and exciting and can be concluded quickly, like in no more than one or two game sessions. If it's something that drags on and on, that's very complicated, then obviously there has to be something that ties those adventures together more than just you're a band of friends and you like to adventure together. Because chances are, in your game universe, there are other people who are like the PCs and who do PC-like things. One of the things, and this is true of certain games, especially horror games, is, you know, why are these people constantly putting their nose and meddling into these supernatural affairs? Uh, don't they have anything else to do? Aren't they have enough brains to run away when they see something that is obviously dangerous and going to kill them? And trying to eat their brains. Or eat their brains, yeah. Unless, you know, it's some kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, setting and you have zombies trying to, you know, eat them. Well, in that case, they have no choice. There's the push and the pull technique. For those of you who are listening, what would you consider is a push and a pull? 
Well, push is something that forces you to adventure, like you've been dropped onto this desert island, you have no food or anything like that, or shelter. you got to find some food and shelter quickly. That's a push. You are pushed into the circumstances. Like the TV show Lost. That's an idea, sure. The other way is the pull, which is a bit more traditional. Everybody's used to it. You have a reason to adventure. You found it. There's something that makes you want to investigate the unknown. That usually means you're hunting for treasure. Or you're having a uh, character that has certain goals and certain things they want to do. For instance, avenge their father who was murdered when they were young, or whatever other archetypal story that characters might have as part of their personal background or their personal goals. And then you just provide the setting or the plot hooks for them to actually follow it and get them to go basically where you want them to go. But it's essentially to further their own character evolution. And it's important to remember that the push and the pull in any campaign is the basics of a meta plot that could string various adventures together over the course of a campaign. Now if you're going to be running more than one game I guess it's important that you have some kind of a good system that has a character advancement or at least that the character advancement system works well for what you're trying to do. Definitely your choice of game system matters and we zero in on the issue of character advancement because if you're planning on a campaign that's going to last over the course of which the characters are going to develop the character advancement rules in the game system that you have chosen are a really important part of it. In general, there are two different ways that characters can advance in a role-playing game. One is in levels, and the other is incrementally, where individual skills or abilities change from adventure to adventure. Now, in a level-based system, it's simple. You know, I woke up this morning and suddenly I can fight better, or suddenly I know ten new spells, that sort of thing. In this kind of game system, people do advance more rapidly, and they advance in big surges. This is good if you want the challenges that are going to be faced by the characters to evolve along with the campaign. Again, if the meta plot of the whole campaign suits that sort of thing, the characters becoming more and more heroic. In the case of a uh, more incremental a skill or points-based system, they're not going to advance so quickly, so the challenges also have to be very gradual in how they increase over time as well. If you increase the challenge, the further they get into the plot in this kind of game, the game might become too challenging and too frustrating for the players. And it would be more appropriate to reward the characters with things like money or new equipment, which would make them more powerful as time goes by. Also, there are more general issues, you know, apart from character advancement with regards to choosing a game system. And obviously, if the game has detailed combat rules and you like fighting, then that's the way to go. If the game system is more given to a quick resolution of tasks and puts the responsibility squarely on the GM's shoulders in order to decide how these things are going to work from situation to situation, and you are that kind of hands-on GM and don't like the players to run the game for you, then that's the way to go too. But if you like a lot of rules and you don't mind the players giving you input at the table as to how certain situations should be run, then you should choose that sort of system. However, it bears mentioning that as the Game Master, you should choose a system that you know at least as well as the players do. Otherwise, you will lose control of the game quickly.